Hi, my name is J.P. Michaud, and I'm a professor at Kansas State University. The recent invasion of sugarcane aphids in the High Plains has caused devastating losses to grain and forage sorghum production. But these aphids have not gone unnoticed by our community of beneficial insects. Lady beetles are among the most important predators of aphids in our cereal crops, and they've been responding very well to this new food source. In this presentation, I will discuss some of the most important species of lady beetles in Kansas field crops and how to distinguish them. I will also discuss their biology and point out some of the unique adaptations of individual species. Lady beetles are, of course, notorious as aphid predators in both larval and adult stages. Keep in mind that any large adult lady beetle you see will have consumed anywhere from 300 to 500 aphids during larval development alone, and will consume far more than this in the course of their adult life. We have at least a dozen species of lady beetles in our high plains cereal crops, and collectively they contribute to control of at least 12 aphid species. Some species are very dependent on aphids for either reproduction or development, whereas others have much broader diets and can develop and reproduce on a much wider range of prey. So because these species have such different attributes, they do in fact complement each other in delivering biological control of aphids. The native species have many adaptations for surviving our extreme Kansas weather conditions. During hot, dry summer weather, they can enter a reproductive dormancy and use exclusively plant resources to survive. In winter, they can hibernate and survive weeks of below freezing temperatures. Fortunately, it also appears that the sugarcane aphid is very suitable food for most of the species we've examined. The eggs of most aphid feeding lady beetles range from bright yellow to orange in color and are typically laid in clusters that may contain anywhere from 10 to 40 eggs. When these eggs hatch asynchronously, the first larvae to hatch quickly consume any infertile or late hatching eggs. This is actually part of mom's plan. Some eggs are destined to serve as food for their siblings, and the clustering of eggs together increases opportunities for this sibling egg cannibalism behavior. Larvae that obtain an egg meal before dispersing from the cluster can survive much longer before they encounter their first prey item which is important because eggs are typically laid some distance from the aphid colony for their own safety. The larvae are not immune to cannibalism or predation by other species, especially when aphid colonies begin to decline and food becomes scarce. The Asian lady beetle in particular is highly competitive in this regard and has been held responsible for the declining abundance of many native species. When larvae become fully fed, they enter the pre-pupal stage. In this stage, the larvae sticks itself down to the leaf using its anal pore and arches its body into a bent position. In the pupal stage, the final larval skin is shed and remains gathered at the base of the pupa. The phototop center shows the shed skin of a harmonia pupa from which an adult has successfully emerged. Of course, both the Pre-pupal and pupal stages are largely defenseless, making them vulnerable to yet more predation or, as pictured, cannibalism by either larval or adult stages. In the remainder of this presentation, I will introduce you to individual species of lady beetle, point out their identifying characteristics, and list some of their key ecological adaptations. When it comes to aphids and Kansas cereals, Hippodamia convergens is probably the most important species of all. It is often as abundant as all other lady beetle species combined. It is highly adapted to high plains conditions. It survives hot summer weather in reproductive diapause, making use of plants as a source of both food and water when 
aphids are unavailable. It can hibernate throughout the winter, tolerating weeks of sub-zero temperatures without freezing. It is very drought resistant. Both larvae and adults have a much lower water demand than many other species. Although the larval stages can complete development on non-aphid foods, such as moth eggs, adult females will not lay eggs until they gorge on aphids for three to four days. This ensures that females only lay eggs when sufficient aphids are present to ensure the survival and development of their offspring. When aphids are abundant, females can produce clusters of 30 to 40 eggs on a daily basis. This species has responded well to the presence of sugarcane aphid in sorghum, and their lab studies indicate that the aphid is a suitable prey for both larvae and adults. The 12-spot lady beetle, Coleomegala maculata, is a common species in many habitats across North America. The larvae typically have pronounced yellow rather than orange markings on their third thoracic and third abdominal segments. The bright pink coloration of the adults is typical of this species. It is notorious for its wide range of prey and its ability to develop exclusively on pollen of flowers. They are therefore not so dependent on aphid populations for reproduction, but neither do they have the high reproductive capacity of the species that specialize on aphids. Another factor that limits their abundance in Kansas is their need for a source of free water or available moisture, without which they will quickly lose fertility. The multicolored Asian lady beetle, Harmoniac cirrhotis, will be familiar to most people as an urban pest for its habit of entering houses and other structures in the winter. The larvae are easy to recognize by the rows of short spines on the back and the five consecutive abdominal segments with orange panels. Adults. The seven spot lady beetle, Coxinella septumbunctata, is the largest species in Kansas field crops. It was introduced from Europe several decades ago and now has spread across all of North America. Larvae can be recognized by their generally bluish hue and the yellow panels on the third abdominal and third thoracic segments. This species is a true aphid specialist, as the larvae require suitable aphid prey to complete development. The suitability of sugarcane aphid for this species has not yet been tested, but numbers of C7 have seemingly not increased as much as would be expected given the abundance of this new prey. It is quite possible for adult lady beetles to reproduce on an aphid species, which does not support the development of its larvae. There are at least two species of the genus Skimnus that can be found feeding on sugarcane aphids. These beetles have no common name, and they're very small, only 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch long. Their larvae are covered with a coating of wax, which is unique to this group of lady beetles. This wax serves as a form of chemical camouflage, which enables them to forage undisturbed in ant-tended colonies of aphids. As the ants defend the aphids from their predators, they also protect the skimness larvae from would-be predators. So even though these small species do not eat a lot of aphids, they enjoy a unique ecological niche protected from other aphid predators. They are also able to reproduce much more quickly than larger lady beetles and on much smaller aphid colonies. The genus Diomus belongs to the same tribe of lady beetles as Skimnus, but larvae of these species lack the waxy covering. A Diomus larvae is basically what a Skimnus larvae would look like if you remove the wax. The pupae are similarly distinguishable based on a lack of wax but adults of the two genera will be impossible to tell apart without close examination of specimens. You won't be able to distinguish them in the field. They're very fast and very small. Fortunately, the sugarcane aphid has been shown to be a suitable prey for both Diomus and Skimnus species. There are two species of Cyclonida active on the high plains. The blood red lady beetle, Cyclonida sanguinea 
is unable to hibernate and thus is restricted to a very southerly distribution. The polished lady beetle, Cyclonida munda, is the species that occurs in Kansas. Both species specialize on aphids, but also eat psyllids and some scale insects. Both appear to utilize the sugarcane aphid quite effectively, and have increased their numbers in response to its invasion. These species have a relatively short life cycle and rapid reproductive rate, which enables them to increase in numbers quite quickly. Finally, we have the ash gray lady beetle, the pale form of olive nigrum. This species also has a dark melanic form, but the pale form predominates in the arid environment of the high plains. This species primarily lives in trees where it feeds on aphid psyllids and scale insects. When sugarcane aphids are abundant in nearby sorghum, it can be found taking advantage of the opportunity to feed on them. However, it is not expected to be an important biocontrol agent of this pest, as it normally does not occur in sorghum and is not likely to frequent this crop when aphids become less abundant. Finally, it is important to remember that, although the sugarcane aphid is a migratory pest, virtually all of its predators are not. They are resident species that must survive locally, moving from one crop to another in the course of the growing season. Because aphids in each crop are only available periodically and for a short period of time, lady beetles must resort to plant foods to survive hot summer periods when animal prey can be scarce. These resources include pollen, nectar, and extrafloral nectar. So a nice strip of cover crops with broadleaf plants that flower midsummer will encourage lady beetles to remain on the farm after they emerge in large numbers from maturing wheat fields. That concludes this presentation on lady beetles as predators of the sugarcane aphid. Collectively, these colorful beetles are sure to be important agents of sugarcane aphid biological control.